So there are lots of reasons that you might want to film yourself as a filmmaker. It might be to keep a film diary of a project that you're working on. Morning, day one of my video diary, which means um, I haven't actually done anything yet. It might be that you're making a documentary and you've decided to put yourself at the heart of that story. We've seen many popular, even Oscar winning documentaries that have done this. Maybe you want to make a vlog, maybe you want to make a short film and you're the only actor. No matter the reason, filming yourself definitely makes up part of that DIY, do-it-yourself filmmaking landscape. So getting good at what works is going to save you a whole heap of time retaking shots in which you've reviewed them and gone, oh my god, I look awful, or even, oh my god, that shot looks awful. Maybe the shot does look awful. You do not look awful. I want to really emphasize that fact. It's just a case of not knowing where to be in relation to your camera. So here's five ways to film yourself better and have you looking more professional in front of a camera in an instant. Thank God I clicked with the actual hand I can click with and not this one. Number one. Actually, this room's a little bit narrow to really show you number one properly. So for this example, we're gonna go and walk the dog. You can tell I'm having one of those mornings because I just spent five minutes looking for my dog's lead only to discover I'd already put it on her. Also, I'd like to point out the British summer wear fashion I'm currently sporting. Heavy waterproof coat with nothing other but sandals. If you're doing kind of handheld, selfie kind of stuff, the best thing you can do is use a wide angle lens. Wide angles are usually really forgiving when it comes to things like shaky cam. I'm on a Samsung NX Mini and I'm about nine millimeters here. When you zoom in, if I did it here, well, first of all, no one wants to see your face this close up. That's not doing anything for me, really. When you're close up like this, though, also means that every little shake and movement of your hand is amplified by the lens. So going wide helps that not happen. The other thing it does is it contextualizes where you are. So it actually makes you a character in the story that you're telling, thus making you more interesting. Boats. Number two, angles. Where you position your camera is gonna make people think differently about how to react to you. For example, if you shoot yourself from below, then you present yourself from a position of power because you look taller, everything behind you looks taller, and it's what's known as the hero shot. You become the hero of the actual frame. If you shoot yourself from above, well, then you're gonna look smaller. However, you are gonna then show off more things behind you, so the depth of the shot becomes more interesting and therefore you contextualize yourself better just like when we were using wide angles if you use a dutch angle for example where you make your shot wonky then you're presenting something that looks slightly surreal perhaps not meant to be taken as reality and that can be really good for quirky shots or stuff that's just shot on the fly or you could shoot from an angle where you are level with the camera. So it looks like you're having a conversation with the person on the other side of the lens, like I am now. Hello, number three, lighting. How are you going to light yourself? There's lots of interesting ways in which you can do this and experiment to get the right look for you. I'm currently using a studio light, which I can turn and show you like this. And that is kind of staged at a 45 degree angle. So it's, it's giving me this nice soft light on one side of my face, but these kind of interesting shadows, I'm pointing in the wrong direction, aren't I? It's giving me this nice light filling in my face this side, but also some interesting shadows just on my nose and around this side of my face. So it's shaping my face pretty well and a nice little shadow under my chin as well. So it doesn't show off any extra chins that I might be hiding from you. If you don't have a studio light, think about natural light. If you can shoot natural light through a window, that's gonna flood your face quite nicely and fill in any shadows and should make you look kind of youthful in appearance. If you're worried about harsh shadows, then try to look for diffused light. The best kind of naturally diffused light is if you can shoot yourself on a cloudy day where that direct sunlight is being minimalized and softened by all the clouds in the sky. But you can do the same thing with a desk lamp and a piece of grease proof paper over it. What that's gonna do is again diffuse the light and make it softer in appearance 
on your face. If you do happen to be outside and there are no clouds and you've got to deal with direct sunlight, one of the things you can do is try to optimize that sunlight and turn your subject's face, in this case yourself, to a point where you've got these nice triangular, or is it triangular lights on one cheek? That's known as Rembrandt lighting. I've got a YouTube shorts all about that, which I'll stick the link in above. Otherwise, you can try and find a nice shady spot somewhere, or perhaps somewhere where that direct sunlight is being somehow diffused. Or maybe you can use that light to bounce off a wall to light the other side of your face too. So those harsher shadows are kind of evened out. Number four, poise. If you are gonna to decide to be in front of the camera, then you need to control everything behind the camera and also in front of it. We're talking about posture, basically. You should try to engage your core. I hate that term, engage your core. Give yourself a little bit of tenseness in that middle, in that sternum, and pull your shoulders back too. Not all the way back, you don't be looking like you're, I don't know, what's this? Whatever this is. Make sure you're sitting up straight, make sure your shoulders are, you know, some way back, and that when you address the camera, you're doing it in a way that makes it look like you're paying attention and not kind of like slumped over in your chair. So, you know, engage your core, pull your shoulders back a little bit, sit upright or stand up straight. And as my personal trainer of just six weeks once said, yes, six weeks, didn't last any longer than that, you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. And believe me, you are a filmmaking cannon, firing balls of truth and entertainment wherever you go. Number five, your relationship with the camera, your relationship with the lens, in fact. As a filmmaker, you may have already had the experience and knowledge of knowing that most people, except actors, hate being in front of a camera lens. They don't know what to do, it feels entirely unnatural, and of course it's gonna be unnatural. What you're actually doing is talking to a plate of glass. Nobody does that in real life. I love you. Most people don't do that in real life. But you may also have acquired some of the skills to get people that don't like being in front of the camera comfortable doing it. And those skills are the same things that you need to apply to yourself. Things like turning the camera on ahead of time, keeping it on the whole time, telling a story to the camera before you actually start presenting to it. Things that will make you feel a little bit looser, a little bit more comfortable with what it is you have to do. I usually like to tell a story, maybe list the things I've done that morning. Another thing you can do is Pretend that somebody else is standing behind the camera, somebody who is a good friend of yours, and you're having this conversation with them. Or if you can't imagine people behind the camera, imagine that you're actually talking to an individual person who's gonna be receiving this video as a message or as an instruction. And if you do make mistakes, don't worry about it. Embrace those mistakes. All the tripping over of words, all the half-finished sentences where you forget where your train of thought was going, that's all stuff that just makes your approach to camera feel and look more natural, because it is. Because we do all make mistakes. We all fluff our lines all of the time. If you're too stilted, too scripted, then things just become predictable. And whether you're filming yourself or someone else, predictability is the death of filmmaking. Once the audience gets ahead of you, that's it. They've switched off. If you found this video useful, hit the like button and let me know. Also, leave a comment if you tried any of these tips and tricks and they worked for you, or even if they didn't work for you. I'd love to know how you got on. And if you subscribe to the Multiverse Theory, you'll know that by selecting one of the videos on your screen now, you'll be creating an entirely new universe. So go on, create something. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching, filmmaker.